God's people say amen. amen. Let all God's people say amen again. Amen. amen. We are here to celebrate the homecoming of Mrs. Eastwood Lee and Mike Sims. And we are thankful to be in the land of the living one more time. Amen. amen. The family has requested that we follow the order of service as printed. Uh, we will have a selection just a closer walk with me by Mr. Marshall Coley. We will have scripture, readings, Old Testament by Pastor C. E. McLean, New Testament by Mr. Thomas Player. We will have prayer and words of comfort by yours truly. We will then read our obituary silently. And after that, there will be a poem, Go Down to Death, by Mrs. Leazer. We'll have a selection, Going Up Yonder, by Miss Casey Sims. We'll have memories, and the family has requested that the memories be limited to two minutes, and that there be two to three uh, speakers. We will have an oration by Dr. Aaron Novine. We will have a selection, Let the Church Say Amen by Pastor Kevin Washington. We will have acknowledgments and condolences by Mrs. Taylor Sims. And then we will have our procession. And again, our oration will be of Dr. Aaron Novine.
Next, we're going to have our Old Testament scripture by Pastor Stephen McClay. We're about to pray a prayer of comfort. 
and then we'll give some words of comfort. But how many of you believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Amen. If you believe in the power of prayer, amen. We can testify during times like this, we need the Lord, amen. These are very challenging times. These are very trying times. But at the same time, we should have hope. And we're going to pray a prayer of hope. We're going to pray a prayer of comfort and strength. We're going to pray a prayer of healing. Amen. And as I pray, you pray too. And if I don't hit something that's on your heart, you lift it up to God. Amen. Amen. But we're going to go before his throne now. We're going to go before his throne using prayer as a first response. And God, we come to you now, Lord, first of all, saying thank you. God, we say thank you because you're worthy to be praised. God, we say thank you, Lord God, not because of the things that you have done for us, but you have done many things for us. God, the testimony is, is that you have done great things. You have done exceeding things, God. You have done things far above we could ever think or imagine. And God, we come now calling and asking, Lord God, for you to choose that which you do best. For God, you saved us and we didn't save ourselves. God, you found us, we didn't find you. And God, your work that you have done in our life has been in a secret place. But God, you have left us hope in our hearts. And God, right now, God, we ask that you bless this family. God, we ask that you strengthen them in a mighty way. God, we ask that you, Lord God, be our comforter right now. God, that you be our healer right now. God, that you reconcile all things, Lord God, in yourself. God, we pray, Lord God, that as we took care of our loved ones, Lord God, and as we did those things that we were supposed to do, God, we ask that you leave us, Lord God, that ticket of earnest with the Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you leave, Lord God, the comforter with us, Lord God, to guide us through this new era of our life. God, we pray, Father God, right now for overcoming power. God, we pray for everlasting power. God, we pray for wisdom and strength to move forward. God, we pray for your divine knowledge. God, your guidance, Lord God, as we continue to walk this race. And God, we thank you that we can call on. God, we thank you that we have a listening ear. God, we thank you just to know that you're listening to us. Just to know that you feel what we feel. Just to know, Lord God, that you're not just standing over us, but you're standing with us as we endure. God, just to know that when we stumble, you're there to pick us up. God, just to know, Lord God, that you go before us, Lord God, and take our path straight. And God, knowing that you come behind us and perfect those things that we have left undone, God gives us a hope for tomorrow. So God, we ask that you bless us again in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to say to our family that God is with us and that he is our strength and our salvation. He is our stronghold. He is our battle in the time of war. And let's recommit ourselves to the unity. Recommit ourselves to stay together. Recommit ourselves to communicate with each other. Recommit ourselves to encourage each other in the Lord. Recommit ourselves to be family, to be support to each other, to be confidants to each other, to be strength to each other. And the scripture says, this is iron sharpens iron, so the counsels of one man to his brother. We must sharpen each other by the, by the love of Christ. Amen. I want to leave you with these comforting words that we can be endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. We will read our obituary silently.
I'm dead. Good morning, family. Good morning. Giving honor to God who was first in my life and all the ministries in their respective places. This, this poem is entitled Roll Down Death by James Weldon Johnson. And I want to dedicate this poem to the Sims family and all those who were touched by my great aunt, like Eva Sims. Weep not, weep not. She is not dead. She is resting in the bosom of Jesus. Heartbroken husband, weep no more. Grief stricken sons, weep no more. Left lonesome daughters, weep no more. She's only just gone home. The day before yesterday morning, God was looking high from his heaven. Looking down on all of his children, and his eye fell on Sister Eva, tossing in her bed of pain, and God's big heart was touched with pity, with everlasting pity. And God sat back on his throne, and he commanded that tall, bright angel standing on his right hand, Call me dead. Call me dead. And that tall, bright angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder. Call me dead. Call me dead. And the echo sounded down the streets of heaven till it reached a way back in that shadowy place where death waits for his command. And death heard the sun. And he leaped on his fastest horse, pale as a sheep in the moonlight, up the golden streets, death down. The hooves of his horse struck like fire from gold. He didn't make a sound. Up death road to the great white road. And God said, Go down, death. Go down. Go down to Shreveport, Louisiana, and find Sister Eve. She's borne the burden and the heat of it. She's labored long in my bed. She's tired. She's weary. Go down, Death, and death too. And Death didn't say a word. But he loosened his reins on his pale white horse. He clamped to the spurs on his bloodless side. And out and down he rode through heaven's pearly gates, past the sun, past the moon, past the stars, on death road, leaving lightning flashes behind. While we were all watching around her, she turned her eyes and looked away. For she saw what we couldn't see. She saw. Old she saw old death coming like a fallen star. But death didn't fight him, Sister Eve. He looked at her like a welcoming friend. She whispered, I'm going home. And she smiled and closed her eyes. And death took her up in her arms like a baby. And there she lay in his icy arms. But she didn't feel the chill. The death began to ride again, up beyond the evening star, into the glittering light of glory, on to the great white throne. And there he laid Sister Eva on the lovely breast of Jesus. And Jesus took his hand, and he wiped away his tears, and she smoothed the furrows of her face. And the angel sang a little song, and Jesus rocked her in her arms like a baby, and kept saying, take your rest, take your rest. So weep not, weep not, for she is not dead, she's just resting 
in the bosom of Jesus. I'm ready for the sunset. I want to go 
I know your person, she knows how I'm handling him. Um, um, your father, you know, was a good friend. My mom, that's how I did. I mean, you know, with charity, I'm coming all these charities around. Thank you, Grandma. Uh, see when I saw her. And then she even went to me at a Chante, which I think Grandma, too. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she would always tell me uh, her age. And I said, Why do you keep telling me? <laughs> And she said, I'm three years old. I said, well, that's good. So <laughs> she said, what? <laughs> but she was a part of this child, all three of them. And I really enjoyed her working for them. And uh, my, my family, as I said, met them through Dr. Sims and everything. So y'all have a blessing. She's going to be missed. And my sister, Gracie, said that she, she used to call all her and, you know, they was uh, um, monthly and this Sims did. And then have a joke about it. Where did Robbie go? But he was a fine other person. So I just wanted to let everybody know this. So, you all to the family, the mom is gone, but she's still with me. So, y'all take care of me. So, amen.
You ought to have your own son. You can't wait on the preacher. You can't wait on mom. You can't wait on dad. All on you. Help you to get up out of that place. Go to where God is trying to take you. Amen. So I know it's very clear with um, my family. When my day comes and my day will come. And so are yours. Oh, yeah. I want somebody to sing that song because when I get to get to a doctor, a preacher, or a therapist, I want to get to the doctor next to You got your own pep song? Borrow mine. I want to. Christine Pastor of this church, Pastor Grinnell, her absence. She's at a family conference today and she has given me permission to share. Amen. My family would have me to share. Amen. But before I do what is assigned to me, I want to recognize all past the preachers here. Would you please stand and look family and look around to see those who come to support you all past the preachers? Amen. Sometimes they called her, sometimes they didn't call her, they just did not make the appointment. You cancel some appointments, you miss some appointments, but I declare on the blood of Jesus, you cannot miss this appointment. You will not miss this appointment. All of us have this in front of us. My friends, we gather here today to celebrate the life and legacy of a very wonderful woman. No, an amazing woman. Let me go a bit further. We are here to thank God for a beautiful woman Amen. who made a living by making other women look their best. Amen. 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 Don't lose that. Mm -hmm. Too often, brothers and sisters, we hear sad stories about people who tear other people down in order to make themselves look good. People who are selfish, self-centered, narcissistic, who only care about one person, me, myself and I. Right. Yet when I look at the legacy of Miss Eva had not sinned, I, I see a woman of great beauty. A woman who, as the phrase goes today, who understood the assignment. Right. The 
assignment of helping others to become a better version of themselves. Right, right. You see, when some women sat down in her chair, their beauty may have been hidden. It may have even been uh, a bit out of uh, touch with what we call the standards of beauty. But when she got up out of that chair, mm -hmm. she saw the queen on the inside, hey. saw the queen on the outside, and got out of that chair with a new attitude. An attitude that said, uh, I have greater self esteem. I feel good about myself. And in the words of the late, great Dr. Mario Angelo, that great poet, storyteller, activist, autobiographer, called a phenomenal woman. Yes. A phenomenal woman. And that's who Sister Sims was. She was a phenomenal woman. Angela wrote, I, I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand, all fall on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say it in the flash of my teeth. The swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman and not just any woman. Yes. Not your average one, the real woman. Right. Not an insecure, petty woman. Right. But moreover, an overcoming, overarching, and absolute beauty on the inside that showed up and showed out on the outside. A phenomenal woman. That's not an average woman. Right. That's not your everyday run of the meal woman. That's a uh, Phenomenal. Yeah. Any phenomenal women in here today? Yeah. You know, <laughs> phenomenal women help to make other women phenomenal. All right. All right. And she raised three phenomenal women. Let's give it up for you. Three phenomenal granddaughters. Amen. Amen. So, in a very real sense, that's why we're here. Day to celebrate a phenomenal woman. That is a person who recognizes their work and seeks to help others to come to that same realization and conclusion. When I look at the Bible, God's love letter to each of us, this amazing work is filled from Genesis to Revelation, from cover to cover, beginning to the end, about some wonderful, magnificent, marvelous women. Today, for a few moments, I want to spend just a Balance of my time together, our time together, talking about a phenomenal woman, mm -hmm. a woman that we've all heard of, a woman named Esther. All right. right. You remember the story from Sunday school. Esther became queen of a great dynasty that spread over 127 provinces because her predecessor stood up for herself by refusing to be paraded before her drunken husband and his equally drunken comrade. Her name was Queen Vashti. When she turned down her husband's request and the man that she come into the room and she marched in like meat on her hook, she was she told him, I'm not not today. Not today, Sam. And for standing up for herself, she was ostracized. She was deposed. She was fired because it was reason that if she stood up to her husband, the king. And the word got out throughout the provinces, then the other wives would also stand up and speak their mind. So another queen was employed and sought. She had to meet certain standards. She couldn't just be in the average Jane. She had to be beautiful, like the women in this room. She had to be fine, Lord have mercy. More than anything, she had to be quiet on all matters and just be another pretty face. She had to smile and show her pretty whites, give the pageant girl a wave, but keep your thoughts to yourself and just sit there and be pretty. And don't forget, if you don't act as a well-behaved woman, we would gladly find your replacement. Being queen, being queen had its benefits. She had servants waiting on her hand and foot. She lived in the palace. She wore beautiful tailor-made dresses. She had a personal chef. She was living large, living like a boss. Now, who would want all of this to be in their lives? But one of the things that she had to do was be quiet. And in my mind, as I looked at through scriptures, this was a black woman. Then I get a little cup of tea. I'm mad. 
you're sitting next to one. And if you, if you think you can win an argument, let me remind you. You will win if you be in second place. <laughs> and Esther, like her predecessor, wanted to be appreciated for more than just being gorgeous on the outside. Like that old Temptation song, she knew that beauty was only skin deep. So Esther found herself in a conundrum between a rock and a hard place between the devil and the deep blue sea. What do I do? They want me to just be quiet. They want me to just sit here and be pretty. Uh, but I got some other things I need to say. So for a moment, she remained quiet. Because when you finally move from the projects to the palace, you don't want to lose all the amenities that come with it. But she saw other people in trouble. She saw other people being tormented. Her uncle Mordecai had to speak to her and say, listen, they're coming for us now, but they're coming for you next. That's why you need to stand with people in that time of distress because they're coming for them now, but they're coming for you and me next. So she was tormented. Do I speak up and lose all of this? Her uncle said, who knows? Maybe God has strategically place you in this place at this particular time for a particular reason. In other words, you're not an accident. None of you are not, you're not accidents. I don't care uh, what gleam your daddy saw in your mama's eye, vice versa. You are here on divine assignment. Now, whether you observe and keep that assignment is up to you, but you're not an accident. God has called you for a purpose. And God has called you to stand up at such a time as this, whether it's on your job or whatever. God has not put you here to just to be silent Sam or silent Samantha. So she took it as long as she could. But when she heard about the genocidal plan that was set forth to exterminate all of the Jews like bugs, like Hitler did with the Third Reich, and like some seek to do even now with black and brown people. She had the right to remain silent, but she did not observe that right. I wish I could have some mouth. You have the right to remain silent. That's what Chief would say when he pulled you over. But you should not observe that right. When you see something wrong, see something, you ought to say something. And not just say something, you ought to do something. Because God has placed you in that position not to just be you and you. God has put you there. Because other folks have to put you where you are. And the debt that you and I owe is to be kind and try to pave the way for somebody else. One of my great heroes, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., like yours, off of this, he said, life's most endearing question is what are you doing for others? Yeah. This time of selfishness, this time that people only are concerned about what they can get out of the deal. God has blessed us and brought us to this place so that we might be a blessing to somebody else. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to you. God did not just put you here just to be a pretty whatnot up on the stage. God has put you here to help somebody else. God has put you here to help somebody else. She was a little late to the game, but she finally got the memo when she heard about this genocidal plan and plot. She said, I can't just sit here. I just can't be mute and cute. I can't just be another pretty face. I've got to say something, and moreover, I've got to do something. So the king is in this meeting with his boys, and you don't disturb the king when he's in session. But she didn't knock on the door. In my mind, she come through fight, fought fight the door, and kick the door in. And sometimes you gotta put manners aside. Sometimes you gotta put the forum aside. Sometimes you gotta say, I wish I was at, at my own church today. I was said another way, but I'll be Amen. Sometimes you just gotta say the hell with it. Amen. Amen. Because people's lives. Online in that state. Yeah. You and I have to do something. We can't just sit and do nothing. 
and she did not sit and do nothing, and she, she barged in. Yeah. She kicked the door in, in my mind, and she said as she was walking, if I perish, then let me perish. Yeah. But I'm going. And in Alabama, we would say, I'm going. I'm going to see the king. That's what the literal text says. But in essence, she would say, I'm going on assignment from the king. Did you get that? You and I have an assignment, a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Never dying soul to save and fitted for the sky. You got an assignment from God. The question is, are you on your assignment? That's what he said. If I perish, if I die, so what can happen to me? We can but die. As the Claude McKay said, if we die, we can't die just like pigs. We gotta die with dignity. With respect, standing for what we believe in. She barged in with her fine, beautiful self. And the king, the guardsman, was ready to take her out. He held up his hand and said, Don't do that, brothers. You try to take her out. You got to take me out. And he let her have her. And she told about the murderous plot. That Haman had put forth this, this, this plan to exterminate all the Jews. And she remembered what her uncle Mordecai said today they're coming for them, but tomorrow they'll come for you. Yeah. And she decided not to remain silent. I said all of that to say, brothers and sisters, God has us on assignment. Our assignment is to help people make better choices, yeah. help people to be their better selves. Yeah. That's what. This dear sister did. She helped her to look beautiful on the outside. And, and when you come on now, brothers, when, right, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you when you go to the barbershop and you get that new haircut, all right. All right. All right. When you get on a brand new pair of threads, all right. you, know, you gotta straighten up a little bit. All right. You gotta lean back, put on a little smell good. Right. Come on, now. feel good about yourself. It yeah. helps your self-esteem. That's what she did. Uh, women came in there looking like who would have thought? <laughs> they left out looking like the queen of Sheba. All right. All right. I'm finished. All right. God has blessed us with the life and legacy of just the same. Yeah. This legacy says to us that we have a charge to keep our God glorified. Yeah. It is our it is our solemn duty to help somebody else the way others helped us. Amen. I remind you again, we're not here where we are without somebody speaking a word on our behalf. Yeah. How dare we be beauty and cute and not speak and stand up yeah. for others. I close with this. It's a reminder in form, a reminder that uh, I speak to myself that tells me that I can't just be at can't just be run of me. Yeah. God didn't put that African blood in your veins for you just to be, just to get back. Yeah. God has called you to excellence. God has called you to be your better self. Like Sister Eva made those women look getting out of the chair. They walked differently when they got out of that chair. But you ought to do the same thing with your words and how you treat people. You ought to recognize that God has put you in that position for such a sign as this. Yeah. So we're charged to be the best that we can be. Douglas Pallet said in his way, if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. Yeah. So be the best little scrub on the side of the wheel, be a bush if you can't be a tree. Yeah. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It's not by size that you win or fail, but be the best. Be the best, be the very best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever you are. Amen.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church Say amen. Let the church say amen. God's spoken. Let the church say amen. Ain't this your response to what he said? Healing of your body, raising of the dead, no matter how you feel it, or your words will be never hold through the night, go with the fire, God is so good, let the church say.
by Sister Jamie L. Cooper, recording Stewart, the Reverend Nay Renell Pastor, the Reverend Richard Stark Sr., presiding elder, the Right Reverend Stafford J. N. Wicker, presiding Great invitation, Ephesians 3 and 20. Amen. The reading of the resolution. One more from the National Bar Association. It reads as follows. I write to express my heartfelt condolences on the passing of the beloved mother and family, Matriarch, Eva Lee had not said. But I've never had the honor and privilege to meet your mother, have strength, creative spirit, and compassion for others shines brightly through you, her precious, precious daughter. I have the opportunity to serve with you on the Judicial Council of the National Bar Association, where we help organize an annual quantum celebration and recognize the retired justices. Your patience and ability to master, masterfully set the tone of the program with the right music to soothe the mind and to assure the soul is undoubtedly an innate gift to give it to you by your mother who has herself baptized at an early age. During the father program, which is designed to preserve our heritage and richness of our African history and culture, we would adorn ourselves in the African time. Here too, your mother's image from her out of fashion is reflected through you as you were always outfitted in the most unique and creative cultural fashions. While there are no words Sufficient to heal your heart or to fill the void left by your mother. Take comfort in knowing that you are loved and supported. May the memories of your mother be the lure of your strength and may life and legacy remain forever in your heart. Many pr my prayers are with you and your family during this difficult time of bereavement. Please do not hesitate to contact me if I may be assistant in any way. The Sister of Christ and the Judiciary, Judge Michelle Sweeney of New York. Amen. Oh, change holding me down. My 
Stuff like that. 